19-year-old Miracle Boy Dave Mira. He was the BMX superhero. He was this, you know, larger-than-life BMX legend. What's happening, Brochachis? Today is a little cold in California, but I decided still to chill poolside so I can give you guys a better look at what we're about to cover. And because the topic of today's video is very nostalgic to me, I wanted to take ample time to introduce the subject, the bike, and a little backstory about everything going on. But before we get into any of this, please make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. This is a moment you guys have all been waiting for. I've gotten nonstop DMs about this bike for a very long time, and I know I've been teasing it, but it's for good reason. On February 4th, it'll be the fifth year anniversary since Dave Mir's passing. So I wanted to make sure that this video touched on a lot of subjects that are very near and dear, as I'm sure they are to a lot of you guys out there. So without any further ado, let's go over the bike and then I'll give you guys a little bit of backstory. Try to get a little scenic here with the palm tree. Let me know if it worked. First and foremost, very big shout out to Fu and everyone over at Epic. He actually saved this bike for me when he could have sold it for a lot of money, so I genuinely appreciate that. Now, the reason that this bike is very nostalgic to me is that when my brother and I were growing up in Watts, we were pretty underprivileged. So we saved up every penny we had to buy this bike for both of us via eBay, which later became the eBay store that Fu and I turned into a powerhouse. So that in itself ties in this whole nostalgic story because it was also my inception into business when I was 15 years old. I'll touch more on that later. Let's get into the bike. This is the 2017 model. So it's not the original bike that I got, the 1999 2000 model. Man, I remember it like it was yesterday. This bike came pretty close to what it is like today. The only big difference is the pedals were the original Haro platform pedals in metal. They have the Haro Hevron logo. It was all one big pedal. So I'll obviously have to find the image and place it for you guys to see, but man, those pedals were so big and so heavy and destroyed my shins. I don't think they've healed to this day. The other big difference is the Haro 44 tooth Mega Nuke sprocket. Now this has the Mega Nuke look to it, but it's a lot thinner and obviously a 25 tooth. My brother and I had the 44 tooth version. Growing up South Central and having a flashy bike like this was terrible. I'm pretty sure Man Cobra ended up getting robbed for this gun at gunpoint. You know, it has been since 2000, so it's been 21 years since I remember those days, but whether we got the blue one first or the red one, I can't exactly remember. But we did buy this bike, part it all out. He kept the frame, I believe he kept the wheel set, and my friend Jesse bought like the stem and the cranks, and my other friend Alex bought, I think, the bars and the forks. Essentially, we made some of our money back to then save up to then buy other parts. So. That's what started my brother and I's bartering, trading, and mechanical lives. And my brother to this day is a mechanic for Lamborghinis and Audis via Sheepy Race. And I obviously still ride BMX to this day, became a professional, and all because of Dave Mira. We both saw Dave Mira in the 1989 X Games doing a double backflip over a box jump. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I remember staring at his bike and, and dissecting every part of it down to the point where he had the Odyssey mono lever, and I wanted that lever so, so bad. It's pretty awesome thinking back about all those cool memories. But again, let's get back to the bike, and then I'll get into the nostalgia, and then we'll wrap this thing up. So on the remake, they did a really good job with the aesthetics, making it look just like it did back in 2000. The seat is obviously the most emblematic part, the big Haro mirror seat with the old English writing. That was probably one of the coolest things I'll never forget. I used to always affiliate this with gang banging and stuff, but then when I saw Mira did it, I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. We got the Fusion seat post. This one's obviously pivotal. Back in the day, this would have been a railed seat. We got the Haro, very similar looking Hevron seat clamp. That, I remember, it looks just like that. And then obviously the frame. I don't know if this is exactly to spec, but it looks pretty close. I do definitely remember the wishbone. I do remember the 990s at the bottom, which I really do prefer. The more modern bike obviously has plastic Haro pedals, which is, you know, of today's day. It's got the Haro Bike Signature 78, which is Dave Mirror's birth date. You have, I think these are supposed to resemble the Fusion Cranks, pretty cool. The Mini Haro Mega Nuke Sprocket. The hollowed out KMC Cool Chain. I don't remember if it came with a regular Cool Chain or just a KMC Chain, but that's a nice touch. Obviously the frame's been modernized, so it has built-in chain tensioners, a very small and sleek dropout, and I'm sure it's down to today's standards when it comes to weight and strength, and it looks very clean. 
The wheel set back in the R day would have been the Alex triple walls with some Haro hubs, I believe. Uh, these are more of generic Haro hubs. And the tires back in the day would have been the Haro Hevron tires with the white wall. Um, I, these ones are pretty cool. These are, I think, Dennis Anderson tires. They're the La Mesa, if I saw correctly. And these are pretty beefy. These are 2.4. So back in the day, we ran something called the Pizza Cutter, and that's where the tire is really narrow. They would have been like 185, 195, two at the very max. One of the coolest things that they did with this remake is leaving the 990s on the fork. Dave was known for taking off his brakes, but just, just leaving it like that. And that was really cool. Also, the best thing was that my brother got the Haro Flare. I got the Haro Back Trail. To this day, I'm a very huge Ryan Nyquist fan. I think he's one of the coolest people, amazing athletes, and his career is so longevitous. I really always tip my hat to him. And I just like the fact that they would go back and forth. But at that time, Dave was my god. So no matter what, it was always Dave number one, Nyquist number two. I got love for you, Ryan. I had your bike. I had the sledgehammer bars and everything, but it's just Dave. What more can I say? So again, the forks are a very nice touch. Down to today's standards, very light. I'm just calling them Hevron parts. I'm sure they have another name, but the Hevron is just like the Chevron logo like this. I'll just always remember. And obviously it's named after Bob Haro. That's what this whole bike company is premised on, Mr. Bob Haro. 3.8 in the front. That probably would have been 14 millimeter back in the day. Another La Mesa tire, 2.4. Okay, on the front end, Tech 77. That's just a signature lever from that era. You got some Haro Hevron grips. Nice Haro, you know, front load stem, which is, you know, to that time specs. It was a pretty cool stem. I can't remember the name. It might've been the big block stem. I can look that up later. I think it's big block. And I had a really nice black one and it had the built-in right here. These were built into the stem and I loved it. It was such a clean look. Obviously always ran the gyro because of Dave. And because of Van Homan, I've always kept my gyro. This was also to that era standards. You would have a fist full of seat post. That just, that's how you bar spin better. When you actually put your knees here, it'll hold the seat better so you can get down on bar spins. And as far as the aesthetic, again, the beautiful cherry red paint job. It's got the metallic flake. It's got the Dave Mira logo right here, which is very cool that they did that because at the end, Dave obviously left Haro and started Miraco, which is a sub brand of Trek, but yeah. That's a pretty good run through of the bike. We don't need to go into detail as to the bars and more traditional spec, obviously, and a traditional headset and whatnot. But let me go over there and show you guys a couple little things that I've found over the years. Also, the last time I made a video back here, people thought that this was my pool. Like this little tiny thing was a pool. It's obviously a jacuzzi. The pool is over here. Funny little YouTube stuff. So I suppose we can call this a little mini story time with Alf. I essentially owe my life to Dave Mira in one roundabout way. I'll never forget the moment I saw him on TV. He did a double backflip and I was like, man, that's something I wanna do. Like I wanna do that for the rest of my life. And I remember getting so hyped and begging my mom to help me get a bike. And she was just like, I'll do what I can, but you know, I'm working three jobs. I don't know if I could afford it. And my brother and I have always had this never say no attitude. And we're like, we're gonna figure it out. And I literally took her credit card and I went and figured out how to open up an eBay account. And then we started buying and selling things and this is when you had to send an actual written out check. So I had to forge my mom's signature. Obviously we were giving her the money and we just didn't want to tell her what it was for. We just wanted to get it done. And someone actually conned me at one point. They got me for a Odyssey hazard light wheel set. They just never sent it. And at that time you really couldn't do much about it. And that was it. We would literally wake up at five in the morning to go break into skate parks. We would pedal six miles through a very sketchy neighborhood in Watts. And I never gave up. I always knew that I was going to become something bike related. Maybe I wasn't gonna be good enough to become a pro, but I was gonna be in the industry. And luckily it did turn out that way. One of the most important things I can say about life is just that you have to be humble and understand that a lot of it has to do with luck, but also preparing yourself for said luck. And the more better prepared you are, the more your luck surface area is, and you'll be able to catch that luck. If I didn't work hard, if I didn't ride every single day, if I didn't push myself, I would have never gotten the opportunities. And one of the biggest opportunities came from my friend, Mike Hucker Clark, and my other friend, Anthony Boy Flores. Hucker got me on DC shoes. Boy got me on demolition and volume bikes. Previously, I had been riding for KG bikes. They were one of the first companies to really turn me pro and fly me around the world. So I'm very grateful for KG as well. But riding for demolition volume really helped cement me as a very well versatile and American rider. 
And the coolest part of my BMX career came from, again, my friend Hucker getting me on DC shoes. Look, he's taking two lanes. What are you? I was born in LA, so I've always lived in like a city. I'm Alfredo Mancuso, and I ride the DC when I get. So this ring is one ring that very few people on this earth have. I share this ring with Rob Deerdick, Kelly Bolton, so many amazing lineage riders, Alan Cook, Jerry Bagley, Ryan Biz Jordan, so many amazing athletes have gotten this ring. And it's a real honor to be part of that because also the skateboarders got it and Dave Mira had it. And I'll never forget the first time I got to meet Dave. I had already been riding for DC Shoes for I think a couple years by then. Also, <laughs> I decided to throw on a pair of DC Shoes. These are brand new. I've never worn them, so they have like a deodorant mark from today when I was putting them on. I don't even know how the deodorant got down there, but these are the DC Spartan Highs. These were so good to ride in. I just kept literally like 20 or 30 pairs that I've never really worn or I've worn them once, again, just for nostalgia and just to go with the ring. But the very first time I ever got to meet Dave outside of a bike riding contest, because I, I got to meet him at Do Tours and Triple Crown and stuff like that, and he was always such a gentleman such a competitor, but such a cool guy. I was very fortunate also to meet one of the best mentors in my life. His name's Mike Allen, super great guy, and was my DC TM. He was a director of marketing and really got me to focus more on the career side of things and contracts, it was, it was really awesome. But he hit me up one night and was like, yo, Dave's in town, you wanna go out with us? And I was like, of course. So Mike Allen, Dave Mira, and myself got to go romp around Hollywood, literal Dave Mira style in Hollywood. And it was so crazy because you know, we uh, had a couple of spirits and he was telling me, man, he would call me Paco. I don't even know why. He just thought Paco was like a funny name. And he would be like, listen here, Paco. Back in my day, you know, if, I, if it wasn't for my wife and my two daughters, oh man, I would be giving you a run for your money when it comes to girls. And we got a few more spirits in us and then we ended up crashing Olivia Wilde's party. I, I don't mean to be a name dropper or anything like that. It's just a crazy night in Hollywood. And we went to Olivia's party. We actually got to meet her and Dave was so cool. It felt unreal to just be able to share some experiences with the guy that I idolized my whole life. And he lived up to every expectation. He was just a consummate professional, workaholic, great father, just a great guy. And again, I literally tried to do the best that I could in my bike riding career and everything else that I've done because I always figured that it would make Dave proud. So big shout out to Dave Mira for everything he did in BMX. And I'll make sure to link some of the footage that I have Dave Mira mini documentary that they did. And lastly, I'll leave you guys with this. Uh, this is a picture of the, let me make sure, two, four, six, eight of the nine of us that got to turn pro for DC shoes at the time. And there I am looking a little frazzled. I remember I had just blown out my knee for like the third time and I was pretty depressed about it, but I like powered through. And yeah, the team was Ryan Biz Jordan, Anthony Napolitan, Brett Benesewicz, Mike Hucker Clark, Kelly Bolton, myself, Brad Sims, Jeremiah Smith, and Craig Passero. We all got turned pro for DC at the same exact time, which is pretty awesome. And this is my one and only, I'll do another video where I give you guys a look through my scrapbook that my mom saved for me. And this is my one and only DC Shoes ad in a magazine. It was a two page spread, which is always like a really big honor and it's me doing a turn down at the same place where I did the wall ride flare. And I do intend on going back. But uh, yeah, that's it with story time with Alf. Thank you guys for watching. Hope that was cool to see. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, drop me a like, leave me a little comment, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.